Uh, Senator Sanders. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Senator Murray. Um, and I think this has been a very good discussion, and I hope that we can continue to have more open discussions because I think there are a lot of good ideas around this room. But let me begin my remarks with a radical proposal, if I might, and that is let's listen to what the American people are telling us. You know, when we're at a 10% favorability rating, it might be a, a pretty good idea to do that. And what are the American people telling us? In poll after poll after poll, what they are saying is do not cut Social Security, do not cut Medicare, do not cut Medicaid. That's what all the polls are telling us. The last one is the National Journal, tells us 81% of the American people do not want to cut Medicare benefits at all, 76% of the American people do not want to cut Social Security benefits at all, and 60% of the American people do not want to cut Medicaid benefits at all. Second of all, what else are the American people telling us? They say, yeah, deficit is a serious issue. And as Senator Crapo indicated, and I think we all know, we've made some progress in recent years. We've cut the deficit in half, not bad. And the American people want us to continue to do that. But you know what else they want us to do? In every poll that I have seen, you know what the top issue is? It is the economy and it is jobs. Representative Black made a good point. Real unemployment in this country is not 7.4%. It is close to 14% if you include those people who have given up looking for work and are working part-time when they want to work full-time. Youth unemployment, and the Pope, by the way, Lou Pope talks about this a lot. Youth unemployment is close to 20%. African-American youth unemployment is over 40%. And you know what the American people tell us in polls? They say, invest in the economy, create the millions of jobs that we need. Use government funds to rebuild our infrastructure. That is what the American people are telling us. And I think all of this comes from a fact that we do not talk about enough, and certainly the media doesn't talk about enough. As the American people look out, what do they see in the economy today? They see a middle class disappearing, 46 and a half million people living in poverty. That is the highest we have ever been, while the wealthiest people in this country and the largest corporations are doing phenomenally well. So when the American people look around and talk about the deficit in jobs, what do they say? They say, do not balance the budget on the backs of the most vulnerable people in this country, the elderly, the children, the sick, working families, and the poor. But you know what they also say in polls and town meetings that I do, and I expect that you do? They say when the top 1% in the last few years have received 95% of all new income, you know what they say? Ask the millionaires and billionaires to pay a little bit more in taxes. Ain't going to hurt them. And you know what also they say? When we have record-breaking profits in corporate America, when Wall Street that we bailed out a few years ago is now doing phenomenally well, when one out of four major corporations in this country does not pay a nickel in taxes, then maybe it might be time to ask some of these large profitable corporations who in some years pay nothing in federal income taxes to start paying their fair share. Who in this room is going to defend a situation where we lose a hundred billion dollars a year because multinational corporations are parking their profits in the Cayman Islands and in Bermuda and not paying a nickel in federal income taxes. Anyone think that's a particularly good idea? Senator Grassley raised a point a few moments ago about the defense budget. We are now spending almost as much as the rest of the world on defense. And we're not fighting the Soviet Union, we're fighting Al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, the Department of Defense can't even do us, give us an audit. Anyone here think we really can't cut money in the Defense Department? So I think if we look at a just, a moral solution and good economic sense, I think we can do deficit reduction, I think we've got to do that, but I think we've also got to create the millions of jobs that the American people understand uh, we need to create. So with that,